It's your girl Vina Love, and I'm here with the influence who come up. girl k dot and i am here with the lovely vina love hey. and of course my co-host kai <laughs> thank you <laughs> but you guys already know what we're doing okay let's get started with the vision boys and we're gonna get to know vina a little bit so yeah. let's get started i think i'm gonna start with some hair okay you got the men's one yes, yeah i do, <laughs> I do. <laughs> So Vina, tell me, like, where where did you get Vina Love from? Uh, that's actually my real name. My first name is Davina, D A V I N A, and I just took the D A out mm -hmm. and just let Vina. Love is really my last name. Are you serious? People don't believe me, but <laughs> it is. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I just I just kept my real name. So I bet Valentine's Day when you was in the elementary <laughs> school was crazy. Yeah, it, it worked out perfectly, <laughs> especially with my teachers. Like, yes, Miss Love. It worked out. Did you ever send those things, the, the candy grams? And no. Never? No. Oh, you always got them? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> were you in Shady. Right? <laughs> so when you were in elementary school, did people know who your dad was? Like, were you that kid, the famous kid? Um, not so much elementary, more so like high school. Mm -hmm. And not really a famous kid, because I didn't, I actually wasn't like going around telling people. Like, to me, it was like, okay, we're going to keep this as a little secret. <laughs> like, you know? But uh, once it came out, everybody knew, and they started treating me different because they like assumed that I thought I was better than everybody else. But how if y'all didn't even find out through me? I never even, right. I never even told y'all. So how was it mm -hmm. kind of like weird? Would you say like um, just in school, you know? Because I it was only weird because I was I, especially in high school. I went to perform at art school, so okay. I had to like make my mark as who I was. Gotcha. So like having a celebrity parent kind of shies away from, you know, mm -hmm. being your own person because you're like sure. officially connected to this person once everybody knows. Right. So that was the only reason why it was weird for me. And I was I was in a school where you were only allowed to like have like one or two majors, I had three. Okay. And I was like playing sports and stuff. Right. <laughs> like I was all over the place. So they probably was you think they was hating? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely, like even now, like a lot of the people from high school that like had so much to say about me mm -hmm. today are like, oh, we love you so much. Isn't that so it's weird? Like, like so you didn't even like me. Funny, cause you didn't yeah. even like me. Cause wow. people I feel like don't understand, like they're like, if someone's like parent is successful or whatnot, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, that person has it so easy. But it's like, they don't understand that yep. person. Cause it's like, yo, they gotta, even if they do something great on their own, they still have to exactly. deal with the fact like, that's oh, it. that was just because of that. Exactly. You know? right. And that's like, that's just a different type of situation people don't realize. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have to have empathy for that. Too. And people just think like, you know, it's so easy to like, you know, they think, of course, like, they think having a celebrity parent is like an easy route, but it's really not because right. you have to like, you're on constant defense mode mm -hmm. of like, no, this is who I am. This is what I want. This is what I do. Like, so it, it was, it was a little weird, but after I made my name and like, I showed people like, okay, I am a dancer. I am a singer. I am an actress. Right. Like people kind of let up. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's really just about proving yourself. So speaking of that, like um, with you, especially now, like doing TV and stuff, you honestly, you kind of are different. So like, how did you feel about like, you know, interacting with the other kids, you know, celebrity, I mean, other celebrity kids? Mm -hmm. um, originally, I was kind of, I, I was actually really interested in seeing like, uh, it's like, okay, it's like having superpowers. Yeah. And now all of a sudden <laughs> you're in a class with a bunch of other kids who got yeah. super, like you really don't know what to expect, like if everything's gonna blow up or mm -hmm. if everybody's gonna be cool or understanding. 
So I was a little, um, I was a little skeptical skeptical about it but then once I met everybody mm -hmm. and I noticed like they all have things that they're interested in doing too like right. they're it, it, they may not be singers or some of them are rappers but a lot of them are just into you know podcasting and mm -hmm. writing uh ja Rule's daughter Brittany she's she's a writer and yeah. um she just like you know everybody is themselves so mm -hmm. it made it comfortable like okay they understand like right. they get they get it so it was easy to be cool with everybody. Mm -hmm. It was nice. It was a dope experience. Would you do it again for season two? Uh, we're thinking about it. No, Who knows? Cool. I think your character is portrayed very well. You know. Thank you. Do you feel like? Do you, are you happy with how you portrayed yourself? Um, I have my worries every now and then. Mm -hmm. But um, for the most part, yeah, I feel like I remained true to who I was, and I never compromised that. I never did anything I didn't want to do. So yeah. Mm. Now you scared me a little bit when he was about to fight. I was like, oh, I'm you so know, sad like, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, but even that, like that, that like that's real life. Like mm -hmm. you, you can't help but to react to certain things in life. Like and no matter how much you try to, like you know what, I ain't even going to say nothing. When real life kicks in, yeah, your natural instincts kick in and right. you react a certain way. So that's one thing I wasn't so proud of, but. I wasn't really mad at either because it was like it makes you kind of transparent in a way. Yeah, like it's like all right, at least I know now I'm human. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you gotta be relatable. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's important. And speaking of that, like, what is the you know I feel like every artist has like a story they want to tell, mm -hmm. um, and a and a legacy they want to like leave behind. I know it's still early, but like, what are some things like you you want people to let's say, you know, know you for or, like the story you're trying to tell to your fans. I want to be known for, I always say this too, like being honest and being yourself because it's so hard to like, like you want to please everybody. So you alter so many things about yourself when you're in front of people. Yeah. And then it's like, you find like, you're going to get to that point where you'd be like, all right, I'm tired of doing this. Like I'm tired of faking it. <laughs> yeah. So you come out of nowhere and now you're yourself. And that was a surprise to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, she wasn't doing that before. Right. Now right. you're getting criticized and everybody yeah. has something to say. And a perfect example of that is Miley Cyrus. Like, she was here in Montana. She wasn't, wow. you know, she was she was younger, so she right. didn't really get a chance to like establish who she was. Then when she finally decided to, everybody was like, "That's not Miley," and now everybody her, hates her. Right. Her whole career is like people don't really like you know care for what she does, and that was like, I got a chance to see that in other artists. Yeah. So like that was something I was like, yeah, that won't be me. Like. That's an interesting point because I've always thought like that's that's so difficult to sustain like a career when it's like. You're, you're known for something yeah. so young and then like you have to evolve, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. Like what you just said and like think about Macaulay Culkin yeah. or something like that. Like, like a lot of child stars. Like, right, exactly. And I remember being younger and like, because I've been, I've been a dancer since I was two years old. So like wow. I've been around all of this like my whole life. Yeah. And I remember saying like, why isn't my career doing anything as an 11, 12 year old mm -hmm. before I was even singing? And now that I'm older, like I'm kind of thankful that it didn't because it's so hard to go from a child star to an adult star. Yeah. Like, yeah. It takes a while for people to really see who yeah. you are, like you said. And give you your respect and, you know, like things of that sort. So. Shout yeah. out to Leonardo DiCaprio. He really <laughs> yeah. was able to, like, kind of transfer over. Mm -hmm. See, but that's, that. it's easier for males. Right. Surprising. Like, especially males in the acting world, because not all male artists, like, you know, people still give Bow Wow flag. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people still give certain people, like, you know, because yeah. you look at them a certain, certain way. way yeah. But as an actor, that's, I feel like that's the best. To be a child star and then you now you're an adult star because yeah you don't have to be so transparent like yeah. with music you have to be transparent you got to tell your story but acting right. you mm -hmm. can be anybody you want to anybody be. you want exactly. and half the time you meet them in person and they're nothing like their characters yeah ever like is yeah. they're a completely different person so that's true how did you know you knew how to sing like i always wanted to know i mean like i felt maybe because i'm black so i was like i already knew how to dance so when my mother put me in dance class it was mm -hmm. like all right girl you got I it got this. right so singing yeah. like how did you know like did you wake up one day like and um, just sing you it was two songs. Cheetah Girls had came out. And oh, 2003. Then, I love yeah, that era. <laughs> it was Cheetah Girls and then uh, Nelly and Nelly and Kelly Rowland, Dilemma. Like those were the songs I was like singing at the time and mm -hmm. that's when I noticed like I could like actually sing. But um, also Alicia, Alicia Keys' No One. I used to sing that like over and over for my grandmother. She loved that song. Mm -hmm. And she would just make me sing all day. Did you ever get lessons? 
Uh, not as a kid. I didn't get I didn't get lessons until this age. Mm, so you you weren't shy about like nah, because I was a dancer, so I was always on stage. Mm. Now it was like I'm just on stage doing something else. Right. So it was like you know it do was kind of easy. Is it like do you have like egos like how Beyonce has an ego? Or are you just mm. being a love twenty four seven? Well, no, definitely <laughs> I'm definitely not being a love twenty four seven. Like I. It's kind of weird, like, I get, like, Hannah Montana of Harlem kind of situation because one minute I'm, like, you know, dressed up, dolled down, and then right. I'm outside in the street and you would never even know that it's me. So I do have those moments, mm -hmm. but when it comes to just being on stage and, like, just having to do anything that Vina has to do, mm -hmm. it just comes out naturally. Like, it just works. Who were some, um, who were some artists, like, when you were in that 2003 era? Mm -hmm. like, I know you mentioned Alicia Keys. Like, are there any artists that really inspire you or motivate you? Um, the people that inspire me are, like, everybody from, well, not everybody, but mainly people from, like, the 60s and up. Okay. Like, I listen to a lot of that kind of music. Um, You're an old soul. Oh, I was yeah. just about to say that. <laughs> like, real, real, real old soul. That's dope. That's kind of the people who make the best music who know yeah. history about music. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I say that to artists all the time. Like, you gotta know you, your history. If you don't know the history of what you're doing is right. gonna be kind of pointless like yeah there's no point in trying to like you know build a career because well let me not say that because there's people who do it like there's people who have careers but they don't last long i guess is mm -hmm. my point like right. if you if you study the history that means you want to be embedded in whatever the culture is so yeah. you're like consistently like trying to figure out like what came from what and who is who and things of that sort so growing up i had that a lot like with my dad being who he is my godfather's krs1 and as a, as a child those things didn't mean anything to me it was just dad that's my god dad right. this is who i'm around like whatever whatever but as i got older and i got into the culture now i understand like the significance of who KRS One is, or right. who K Capri is, exactly. Yeah. Now that I'm older, so right. mm -hmm. I like. I just listen to a lot, and it helped me. It yeah. helped mold me into who I am. No, that's funny that you say that, cause um, I was watching this Netflix special it was about like hip hop, and they were just talking about like they would go to. What hotel was it? It was a hotel in, in New York City. And it would all go to the hotel and they used to see your father would be the first one. Oh yeah, with the, get, uh, yeah. the records, yeah. Exactly, and it wasn't like, it was like, you know, newer records. It would be old school yeah. records and he would just, you know, just freestyle with the beat. Mm -hmm. And how does it feel to have people like, even like KRS-One, Nas, like real lyricists mm -hmm. around you? Do you feel like your music has to kind of match that? Like you can't just put yeah. on mediocre? Like I, I mean, I feel like that's why, like, I'm so tough on, I feel like that's the reason why I don't have a lot of music out alone right now, mm -hmm. because I'm so, like, like, just cautious about what people hear and what people know from me, because once it's out, it sticks. Especially, we in a different age now, so once it goes on the internet, it's over. Yeah. Somebody heard it, somebody screen recorded it, somebody yeah. is something, so you're never gonna, like, get away from it, so I'm very, like, you know, cautious about what I do because of them like mm -hmm. so yeah is that like I mean is, is that frustrating because it's like you have that all right yeah I want to make this as good as possible but also I gotta get this out get the content out mm -hmm. you know it's like kind of a yeah. difficult dance all artists have yep. to go through and a lot of like I look at a lot of artists today that I listen to that don't struggle with that Right. Like, they're just like, all right, I'm put it out. If it go, it go. If it don't, it don't. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> like, I just, yeah, like, and I have so much music. I could put out two albums right now if I want to do. But, like, I'm just very selective. And I'm not in a situation, I'm doing this by myself. So, mm -hmm. I'm in a situation where if something fails, it fails. And we got to, like, really start all over. Like, we don't have a label backing us or anything of that sort. So, when we do it, it has to be done right. Mm -hmm. So, taking the time out. If you have true supporters, you have true true fans, and if you have a the right plan, you can still build your brand while you're not releasing music. And then when you do release music, people are paying attention. People who didn't even know you did music. Mm -hmm. got they have, I got followers from people who think I'm just a model or right. I just wear stuff and get on Instagram. Right. So speaking of that, like modeling and fashion and stuff, you kind of have an influence mm -hmm. from... I would say, but honestly, I feel like from being in Harlem, yes. Harlem and New York is known for fashion. Do you feel like your your style speaks when you walk into the room? Yeah. Leave it to me, man. 
fine. Like I wear sweats and Uggs every day and be so fine. perfectly okay fine, it. man. Like a cute sweater and some Uggs, you can never go wrong. And a little bun and you're good to go. And you're good to go, yeah. But, but that's um, like not fashion, fashion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like my mom, she she had she had her own fashion company. She went to FIT. She did all of that. She styled my godfather, my mm -hmm. dad. She's like been in this world, so. Like when it was time to like you know figure out who I was and what I was gonna be and like building my image, mm -hmm. she became my stylist and just knew what to put me in. Like, right. and then after a while, I just caught on to my own style. And but um, to get back to you, Kimmy, I wanted to hear more about like what's going on because the year is ending. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what you're working on? Any any exciting stuff coming out? You know. So I'm working on my album. And <laughs> it's exciting. It's also stressful, but um, yeah, we really right? can't or do it. Hmm? Yeah, in no, I'm India. Yeah. No, I'm not signed yet. Yeah. And um, you know, we just getting through it, man. Right. Like that's the that's the toughest part. Like having the finished result is like the like you never know what it's really gonna sound like. And I've had I have songs on my project from. 2016, from from years ago. Right. So we you never know what know I want to hear from being a love. I want to hear some like I want you to make me angry. I want you to hate all these men out here. Oh yeah, I got I you. I want you to make me that. cry. Like yeah, we got that. Oh, but I will say I, when I listen to my project, it doesn't sound like a typical R&B artist project mm -hmm. at all. I like that. Like yeah. it's. It's you're gonna hear like rather than hearing like these belting notes and stuff like that, like you really hear me like talking about something like, sure. listen, bro, you got me tight, <laughs> and this is what I have to say. Right. But like you can hear whether I'm angry or Cause you, sad or you freestyle rap too. Yeah. It was a song. I don't. Uh, what's the name of it? It came out I think last summer. It wasn't you mad. It's not you can stay mad. It was another one, and you freestyled on it. It was an old school beat. I can't think uh, of the name right um, now. It came out like Jesus. last summer. Uh, Faith Evans. Uh, I think so. VV22 freestyle. How do you like? How do you freestyle? Like how do you, I always want to like? How do you do that? Like well, I when I started writing, I was doing like it started off as like poetry, like you know, mm -hmm. like a, a regular a normal R and B singer, well writer would, and um. Once you write poetry, once you write the words down, mm -hmm. you kind of could turn it into whatever. Like, you could take lyrics and make it either a country song, R&B song, you could do whatever. They're just words. So right. it's really just about your delivery, like how you like put things together. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And let's, let's go back to the topic all the fellas want to know, you know? Like, what? Like, is she single? Oh, I, yeah. Is, is there how are you curving there? these? How you curving wouldn't these the world guys? like to? I curve everybody. I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah, my DMs is crazy. <laughs> what do you say though? What? Like, what if they put Nothing up? Nothing at all. You don't even open it. Nope. <laughs> nope. Cause you know it has that thing where you can see it yeah, without having wanna, to right. open it. No, but and, sometimes um, they be writing paragraphs. You don't even. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I'll, I'll check. Like you could tell or rip if it's something negative or positive. Yeah. Like you could tell. You can tell if it's gonna be crazy or not, but then you could go on your Instagram and you can see somebody's private parts. It's <laughs> Wait, seriously, what? it's, it's that intense. That? Oh yeah, Jeez, it's what? That it's that bad, it's wow. that intense. As if I'm really gonna respond and be oh, like, man. yeah, come on. <laughs> but Jesus. it gets a little hectic, but I, oh yeah, I, def, I curve everybody. Right. And it's only because I'm very selective. Mm -hmm. so even like, even with friends and stuff, like, I like only like certain people around me. So if I do have you around me, it's something right. about like it's something about you. Wait, what's your sign? A Libra. Okay. Libra. And more than that, you're a Libra too. When your yeah, birthday? September 24th. Okay, I'm October 7th. Okay. okay. But um, okay. yeah, like I curve everybody because I like to make the choice of who I want to deal with. Right. And I feel like if like you know, yeah, let me um. Let me do this. Let me take you out. Let me do X, Y, and Z. Like you kind of fall into a trap a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you know, it's like damn. Like now you've been around me, so you could like say like, oh yeah, I hung out with Vina. You know, like, yeah, it's just not exclusive. Get, like no, you know, <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> yeah. Like and I feel like if I catch the vibe first, like oh right. yeah, he's cute. 
like he smell good mm -hmm. he walks a certain kind of way like and it's not even a standard thing it's not even like my standards are too high but you just gotta okay. keep that level about yourself yeah like you know but that comes with also being a woman too when you yeah. let too many people get access to you or you feel like you let the wrong person get access to you it's now it's like you will never have that space again i have to exactly. control who's around me so what's the one word that you say when you about to care of somebody he's like yo veen i got a crush on you like i really i really like you i really love you what you, you mad cute but nah <laughs> like <laughs> that's so cute thank you but like you know we could be friends like and that's the thing too like i have a lot of guy friends like i'm okay with being friends mm -hmm. but i just don't like being like uncomfortable so i'm very open about how i feel though like if you make me uncomfortable I'm you tell him. him yeah oh yeah you definitely told what's his face that yeah you know <laughs> you gotta be honest well give a give a tip to these fellas out here in terms of like how they can slow up their approach because i feel like with this social media age like mm -hmm. dudes is just too aggressive yes with shit, you know that too like it's not like the old days like the Temptations or like Five Heartbeats where they would like sing a song and come up yeah. to you and try to get your attention. Like, nah. it's not that. Now it's like, yo, ma, I got this, I got that, I got this. Right. Let me fly you out. Like, yeah, bro, yeah. like, I don't even know you. Want me to get on a plane with you to go right. somewhere? Like, it's just a little rapey vibe sometimes. <laughs> like, guys don't think about like the things that they it's say. It's a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, like, they don't think about the things that they say and it's just like, bro, like, nah. Like, right. And it's certain people who, who do like those things. I'm just not, not one, one of them. them. Word. You got your morals in check. Like, yeah. And also, like, as it, I'm an old soul myself too, and it's like, I mean, I just feel like it's just kind of a whole rapey tech vibe yeah. anyway. Like, I'm yeah. not on Tinder and none of that stuff. Like, that's just kind of weird. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Like, it's just weird. Yeah, it's just definitely weird. And, like, I think of, like, my past relationships or the people, like, I've dealt with, and it's like, like, the people I've been with, I was around them. Like, right. it wasn't like a just instant, like, okay, yeah, I'm with this person yeah. now. Like, I hung out with them, I like, spent time with them, and you know, so. That's how you build a real rapport. You have exactly. to get to know someone first, Exactly. You know? and, and then, still in all, you still never really know somebody. So it's just like, right. you really gotta be cautious. Yeah. I'm not trying to blow your spot up, but do you have any celebrity crushes? No, actually. No? Mm -hmm. They all like family kind of? Yeah, I mean, not even that, I just, like, the whole celebrity crush thing is like it, that's kind of weird too because like, you don't know nobody yeah you don't really know these people like and then you meet them and they're completely Be different, different than yeah who and exactly so who was being a love listening to these days who's in your playlist to everybody Right. I'm so happy with where music is right now, which is crazy because I remember like it was trash. What I remember when Migos first came out, and that was a time where nobody really understood what was going on, mm -hmm. so nobody liked it. Like, what is this? What do we <laughs> listen to? Like, mumble rap? What is that? And like now, I am the biggest Migos, Gunna, Lil Baby fan yes. ever. Like, I had to like get into the like culture, and what I love about it so much is that being a singer. I like play with different flows, different melodies, yeah. and I rap too. So mm -hmm. like to be able to fit so many words into one like right, bar is so right. fire to me. Like right. and their melodies as rappers is so dope. Imagine a singer singing what they're they rapping. They changed like. the game yeah. too. Now everybody ad libs. You know they they honestly added a lot to mm -hmm. hip hop. Mm -hmm. Think about that because like we're in New York and right. I feel like we're a little behind right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like because we have a lot of lyricists though. A lot of New York people, they That's want true. people to understand what they're yeah. saying. I feel like nowadays, like the Southern rappers, they get it. They know what people they like. Right. Yeah, they hits, exactly. Right? They know, know the formula. I mean? They know yeah. what people, they love. They know how to market very, very right. well. And it's, I feel like we still, which is fine though, we still love good music, mm -hmm. but to make a hit record, I feel like it's harder for New York rappers. Yeah. That's just what it is. We do have the more melodic ones yep. who are making hits, like the A Boogies and little TJs. Yeah. Like, you have have, okay, for instance, like, and this is a shout out to, um, I know rappers, like, okay, this guy, Sleepy Hollow, he mm -hmm. just put his album out. I, I probably, I, I heard like one song of his, like he had this song out with Chef G that was lit. And um, like, I never really heard of him. I never really looked into him. Mm -hmm. So one day I went to, like, I just happened to go to his release party. Like I was out, I was in the area. I was like, right, mm -hmm. let me just pop up. Yeah. So I went, I met him. I saw like his videos and stuff. And then his album came out and I downloaded it. I listened to the album. I'm like, yo, this is so dope. Facts. Why is he not getting no attention? Facts. Aside from us being lyricists and having people like Davies and mm -hmm. you know, people of that sort who don't really get the attention that they deserve. Yeah. 
we're not supportive of each other. We don't, we don't push that kind of music anymore sure. because we want to fit in with Atlanta and all of their trap music and how they do certain yeah. things. Like, so there's a lot of people who get overlooked and he's, he got bars, but he's not a liberal, he's not like Davies. Yeah. But he should be getting some kind of like way more attention than he is. And he's not. And if there's a lot of artists that I know that I like that.